Check this out. This right here is the 401 bot. This is a robot that we're building to automate our 3D printers. And today I'm taking you behind the scenes, showing you how it's built, showing you how it works in software so that you can do it too. Let's check it out. So this right here is my favorite example or demo to show off the bat. So as you can see, we have a row of 3D printers right here, sort of simulating what a large print farm would be like. And once one of those 3D printers finishes, the robot is actually going to go over to that 3D printer. So in this case, we have printer two, and it is going to go find the print that has finished. And there it goes. It's now grabbed the print. And like I said, you can customize your program to do whatever you want. But in this case, it's going to grab that 3D print and actually place it down behind the robot. Now, of course, you could have it put the 3D prints on an assembly line or in a box or whatever you want to do for sort of inventory management. But this right here uh, is just a super, super basic prototype example of the robot actually grabbing a 3D print out of the 3D printer. Now, of course, I know you might be thinking there's way, way easier ways to actually automate 3D printers. You could just have it push the print off the bed. And of course, you are absolutely right. However, if we do it that way, there's tons of things that we can't do, like changing filament or removing failed prints or hooking up a camera and checking out like all these different things. And that is the point of the 401 bot. So that there's a little demo. Let's keep going and let me show you how it actually looks behind the scenes. Now, again, before you jump into the comments, yes, there are obviously easier ways to automate the process of getting the actual print off the print bed, but hear me out when I say this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of function and the potential of this robot system. Also, yes, it can absolutely clear off the purge lines from the print bed. It can also just grab the whole print bed uh, and it will also be able to change the actual filament so there won't be time in between or time when you actually do need a human. So how does this work? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Let's go through it. Let me show you how to build your own sort of robot and then how the actual robot system would also work. Now, again, remember, this is just an early prototype, but this should kind of get the ball rolling in the right direction. All right, now, first things first, that is starting with the 401 bot. Now, like I mentioned, this is an early prototype and it's kind of messy. You can see there's wires and stuff coming off of it, but the final pre-production model will be here in a month and it is crisp, so stay tuned for that. Now, first things first, you build the robot. It will come in a few pieces. They should be really easy to put together. Now, after you have the robot assembled, we have a choice to make. We can either screw the robot directly into a table or a workbench or whatever you want or and obviously this is what i recommend but you can get a linear rail like this one right here and that way the 401 bot can actually move along another axis and this really 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 unlocks the potential of what you can do with a 401 bot so once the 401 bot is either screwed to a table or up on a linear rail we are good to turn it on and so let's shut this one down and actually bring it up from the start so that we can go through it all right, now once it's turned on, we need to home the robot. Now, why do we do this? Well, it's the same or it works the same way as your 3D printers where we need to actually go hit those limit switches and sort of zero or calibrate the robot. And that way the robot arm will actually know where it is in space. So to do that, I'm gonna open up our 401 bot software again. This software is a super, super early prototype, uh, proof of concept, if you will, but here it is. And we currently have the robot connected via USB. So let's go ahead and let's calibrate it slash home it. I'm gonna do this one joint at a time and show you the robot just so that this goes a lot faster. Now, fun fact, the actual production model robot may or may not require calibration. We have some parts that we're trying to upgrade, but uh, that's it for now. At the beginning, you just have to have it go, do a little calibration sequence, and we're good to go. So you can see in our control panel right here, we have the simple up and down arrows, the left and right arrows, and we also, of course, have the gripper control and the rail control. And then finally, these buttons at the bottom here, we're still working on this, but it is a way to move the robot or multiple joints of the robot all at once. So that's honestly pretty much it for the control panel. The whole goal or the whole purpose is to make this operation easy enough that anyone can do it. At this point, we have a full working robot that we can control. We can move the joints around. We can move the gripper around, all that fun stuff. But that's actually kind of useless unless we can actually make and run programs because sure, I could manually sit here and control it and have it do something like make you a cup of coffee. But what we really want is to be able to hit a button, say that button initiated a program called pour a cup of coffee. Then we just press it once and it will actually run the program. 
Traditionally, creating these programs and that whole process was left up to the professionals, but let me show you how you can now make one. It's super easy to do, and there's currently two ways that we can do it. The first one is to move the robot to various positions, then capture and save those positions, and then let it run through those. So let's start with that one. I'm gonna give you a little demo here of just creating a super basic program. Let's try and just grab this off the table and then move it somewhere else. Let's do it. All right, so let's do a little live demo. So here we have our actual robot program, 401Bot, and this is the interface. Now you'll see here, there are all the joints that we can calibrate one at a time, for example, and the robot is running right there. If I click on Calibrate J2, it will actually go back and calibrate the joint number two again. So let's let it do that. Hopefully this camera is all running and we're up and we're good. So next thing is the control panel. Let's talk about this because this is where we will spend most of our time. Now in the control panel, you'll see that we have joints one through six listed and we can go ahead and we can just move these around. So here we're moving joint one, let's bring joint two down for example. Let's go joint three, come down, come up, joint four, left and right, joint five, up and down, and finally joint six with some rotation. Now, next thing that we have is the gripper. So there we go, you can see, we can bring our gripper together or apart. Now our gripper, our gripper runs on a servo motor. And then finally, we actually have the linear rail system. Now with all of these, we can control the speed and the acceleration and all that fun stuff too. We're not gonna waste our time getting into that. We can also move the robot or the robot's uh, end effector by itself, which will move multiple joints at a time. But right now this is still sort of under development, so we're not going to touch that. Now it is one thing to be able to just move this robot around. Like I said, this is already pretty cool. We have a robot, we can completely control it in this software, but just being able to control the robot doesn't really do us any good because what we actually need is to be able to program that robot and run those programs. I've used a coffee example before, but right now, if this was my setup, it's great. I could really slowly manually get it to go and make you a cup of coffee, or I could create a robot program that would actually do that, and then I could just click the make coffee button and the robot would go and make the coffee. So to give you a proper demo of that, let's just take this 3D print right here. I'm gonna put it in the middle of these uh, four circles just so I can remember where it is. And let's actually see if we can get the robot to just pick this up and move it over to the left. So let's do this live. So you can see right here, this is the interface that we're working with. And the first thing, let's just teach a joint. So we're pretty much just saying, okay, the first position is right here. Now to go with that, let's go ahead, let's uh, adjust our gripper so that it's open all the way. So let's teach gripper. That looks good to me. Now, again, this is just super, super early prototype software. I know you can't really see like a log of everything that's going on, but let's just uh, work with it for now. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna actually go and find this. So let's bring our joint two and let's adjust say joint five. This is looking pretty good. Now there's two ways to grab this. We could grab the outside of it or we could just grab one of the uh, internal or just grab it from the inside. We could actually also just grab it this way, but let me show you, let's go down. And at this point, we can also bring J3 up and J2 back down. And let's bring J5 down as well and it looks like it needs to move a little over. So this is looking pretty good to me. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go teach joint. So the robot knows its first one, and now it knows this position here. From here, what we're gonna do, let's go J2 down. It looks like J3 might need to come up a tad. J2 down. And now you can see we're pretty much inside of uh, that 3D print right there. So that looks good to me. From here, what I'm gonna do is also teach joint, but then I'm actually going to take the gripper and grip the object like this. I'm gonna hit teach gripper, and then let's just add in a slight delay so that the gripper has a chance to uh, make sure it's actually gripping it before it starts moving again. So right there, I'm gonna go teach delay, and now we can simply move this object over. So I'm going up here, teach joints. So let's move it, say, over. And again, we could go totally crazy with this, but you get the point. I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So let's put this guy down over here. Let's go teach joints. 
And then let's go ahead and let's let go of it with the gripper. So here we'll go, teach gripper. We'll add in one more delay. So teach delay. And now the program is pretty much done. So we can go like this. And now the arm is out. I'm gonna go teach joints and we are done. So let's go ahead, save program, program. Now in the run panel, we can actually go to open the 401 bot, live test YouTube video, open, and let's see if it's able to go and get it. Moment of truth. It's gonna come down, find its position, and there we go. So that right there is how we make a super, super basic program. Now, again, remember, this is just a very early prototype and you, it's already quite easy to do, but we're gonna make it much better. You'll be able to edit things, go back, modify things as we need. Uh, it, it will be really, really good. So that there is the first way that we make a program. If you want, we could run it one more time just for good measure. And we can actually even run these on loop. Now, this program doesn't make any sense to run on a loop, but I'll hit the loop button just so that we can see it. Uh, kind of keep doing it. So here it goes. Grabs a print, brings it over, drops the print, and it's just gonna run this on a loop. So there it goes again. Now, again, uh, prior to making this video, I went and I actually made the one where it was grabbing the prints out of the printer. So it's quite easy to do already, but like I said, we will have this polished up really nice for you guys soon. So that there is our first robot program that we've made with our software uh, visible for everyone. So. Let's go back to the video. All right, now that that's done and you know how to make a super basic program to do something like move this from here to here, which is kind of useless, you also might be thinking, wait a second, that's a lot of manual programming to actually get the robot to do something like grabbing a print off the print bed. And if that's what you're thinking, you're right. However, uh, A, the robot will already come with those programs, but B, you just have to do it once and then you just save the program. So that's what makes it really cool. Now, let's say that you're an enthusiast or you're looking for industrial-based applications or something with very, very precise movements. This could include uh, things like soldering or welding or pick and pack or anything with PCBs or anything like that. Uh, we're going to be able to take advantage of a program called RoboDK. Now, in RoboDK, what we can do is create a 3D simulation and essentially export the simulation of this robot doing something. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's create a super, super basic program in RoboDK. And then I'll show you also what maybe a more advanced program looks like. So let's do that one. All right, so here we are in RoboDK. And you can see here, this is indeed our 401 bot. And it's just kind of floating around in free space. Now, what we can do is move it around in 3D space. And using RoboDK, we can actually capture and record these positions. So for example, one thing that I might want to do is let's add a target in here. So see it says target one, and then let's just do a simple movement. So let's say that we want to move the print head over here, or sorry, the robot head over there, and then backwards. And let's call this one right here, target two. And then finally, let's actually go and let's put target three over here. Let's create some rotation. And let's call this one target three. Now, what we can do is using these three targets, we can actually create a program. So if we wanna move from target one to target two, we can click this button and you'll see that we are now getting a program. And if I click on these, you'll see it's going back and forth. So from target two to target three, let's create another move. And now you'll see we have this program. We're going target one to target two. Target two is there again because it was highlighted, but that's fine. And then it's going to target three. We could also just delete this guy right here. And now we are going from target one to three. If I actually run this, let's run it on a loop because that was very fast. You will see it is indeed going back and forth between these targets. So let's stop this from running. And now what we can do is actually export this program. When we hit run, we can see it is indeed running uh, what we had it do there in RoboDK. So if I run this even on a loop, you see it is just going back and forth. Now those targets that we selected were not far apart. 
Uh, but that is how we make programs in RoboDK. I'll also throw up a more complicated program here so that you can kind of see what's going on. But I do want to keep this video somewhat short, so let's throw that up on the screen now and keep going. Well, I just went in and quickly made five targets. I'll show you them on the screen now. And I made it so it's going from target one to three to four to two to five. So we get a little bit more interesting of a program. So let's run this now on the 401 bot and it should be a little bit more of an interesting program. So you'll see it is going from target to target here. And it is really cool. You can even move this over so you can see it a little bit better. But you can see the difference in sort of how easy it is to do in RoboDK instead of trying to manually capture these waypoints. So I definitely prefer one of these 3D softwares. I haven't quite decided which one we're gonna land on yet, but I mean, the results sort of speak for themselves. So that right there is the two different ways to control the 401 bot. I hope that helps. Let's get back to the video. So that there is how we control and create programs for the 401 bot. I hope you think this is as cool as I do. If you get a 401 bot, obviously it would come pre-programmed with a bunch of programs like 3D printer automation and some other fun stuff that hopefully I can show you in some future videos. But I did just wanna give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes and show you sort of how the hardware actually goes with the software and the different things that we are working on. With that being said, hopefully you saw or can at least take away how easy it actually is to make your own programs. And if you stick around in a couple of weeks, uh, I will be able to show you the brand new pre-production model of the 401 bot, as well as our optimized uh, software that we've been working on. It will look a lot different than this one. Quite a bit different, same thing with the software. So like I said at the beginning, this is just a prototype, but it is uh, coming and we are close to pre-production. So thank you very much for being here. If you want to see more, go to 401bot.com and also subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. And that's pretty much all I got. So I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or feedback or anything at all, drop it below in a comment. I'll check those out. See ya.